Hello, I'm Atuba George, and it's such a great pleasure to be here to minister God's truth to you. Can we pray? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today, Lord. Holy Spirit, Jesus have already told us that you, and only you, will guide us into all truth. And we know who truth is. Praise <laughs> God. So you are guiding us to him. Thank you, Lord, for revealing Jesus to us. And our eyes have been opened more and more even today. Hallelujah. And I bless everyone watching through whatever medium, through radio, TV, or, or, or through the social media. I declare them blessed right now. And the word of the Lord is coming to you. And you will use it and get a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. Now let's get into this. Now I've been trying to get into this thing since Monday. Praise God. But I think the Lord wanted us to clear um, you know, a lot of things that will be an obstacle to what we're about to say. And I believe we have done that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Note that. There is the believing unto righteousness. Now, what does that mean? See, now, now most of the time when people read the scriptures, they just tie it down to um, what he's saying. But you see, when the Spirit of God is teaching you, every line, he expounds it. Why? Because the person writing this thing was writing under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and get now, 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 get this, get this. When I say the person writing this was writing under the influence of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean the person sat down and said, ah, Lord, detect some portion of the Bible to me. I heard you're writing Bible. So what should I write? Okay, my own, my own is Romans. Okay, okay, Lord. Dictate to me, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. No! This is one person, Apostle Paul, writing to the brethren in Rome. See? He, he was writing them a letter. But see, because Apostle Paul is full of the Holy Ghost, and just like as I'm doing now, see, I'm preaching to you. And this has been recorded, and then it's going to be aired. Now, when, 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 when we're doing this recording, what are we doing? I bring myself under the influence of the Holy Spirit because it's, that's my custom. You get what I'm saying? So every word that I speak, I believe, I believe that it carries power in it. And why? Because I bring myself under the authority of the Holy Spirit that he will put words in my mouth. He will give me utterance. And then while I'm ministering, I'm, I'm, I'm careful to follow the utterance that he's given. See? Why? Because of you. Now, when I speak by his utterance, it is easy for him to give the interpretation to you. Are you getting that now? Praise God. All right, so it says, For with the heart man believes unto, one believes unto righteousness. So, you believe. Believe what? See, the things that will get you into right standing with God. Is what you believe in your heart. Now notice it says it is with the heart one believes. Now that means if your heart is not right, if there is a problem with your heart, then there will be a problem with your belief. This is very important now. And this is one thing that one thing that affects a lot of people's faith without them knowing. Now, Proverbs, Proverbs tells us that we should guard our hearts with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence because out of that heart, the issues of life. Now, what, what does it mean? The issue? Everything you can think of about life comes from your heart. So if you don't guard it, I want you to see that. If you don't guard your heart, you will be tampering. You see, when your heart is a gateway for every nonsense to come in, 
then you will be tampering with your life. If you open up your heart to all kinds of belief, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of facts, then you are setting yourself up for destruction. So what did he tell us? Guard it. Now it's actually David that spoke those words to Solomon. David was telling his son Solomon, say son, guard your heart with all diligence. Now, now when, when you read a statement like that, and then you want to look at the man who said this, and you want to find out, why did he say this? Was he speaking out of experience? Is there something he knows that made him to say this? So you want to look at the life of David. See, I remember what I told you the Bible is, now you want to go into one of the compendium. You want to go into the compendium now. You want to pick out one of the stories. And you pick out David's story. And what are you looking for? How he received the word of God. How come he was consistent, a vi consistently a victor? How come he never lost any battle? And then you find him say, out of your heart are the issues of life. So what? Guard it. So I'm looking at a man who said I should guard my heart. And I'm looking at his life. And I'm, I find out that, or I found out that, there was a day. He was running away from his sons, Absalom now, when Absalom took the throne. And then there was this young man who, who stood up and started throwing stones at him and abusing him and telling him all sorts of things. Oh, judgment has finally caught up on you. You think you would have escaped judgment for all the things you did to Saul? And he asked, what did he do to Saul? Because he became king. He should have said, no, I don't want the kingship. It was my, my ogre that was the king. So I, I, can't take, I can't take the truth. Please give it to someone else. Maybe that's what they wanted him to do. And while this man was cursing David, that's Shimei now, one of David's men heard him, looked at David, I went to David and said, look, sir, allow me to fall on this young man. <laughs> you know, that's, 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 the, that's the attempt. <laughs> Let me just fall on him. <laughs> you know what that means? Kill him. And David said, no, don't do that. He said, because, he says, my own son, he, he said, I wish I had time. I would have loved to read it to you. He said, my own son have taken the throne from me. He's chasing my life. How much more the, the abuse of this young man? He said, leave him alone. And then he now said something. He said, relax. It may be. You know what? What's <laughs> what is staring up in my heart? It's not what David did or said. It is that statement he said, Guard your heart with all diligence. So I'm looking at what the action of David from this standpoint now. And I'm looking at him telling this man, hey, do you know it's just possible that it is God that is staring this guy. Go and curse David. Go and curse David. So when he curses David and David keeps quiet and God's going to look at David and say, oh, let me show him mercy. Ka! <laughs> now, I'm looking at that. And then they left the man. They didn't touch him. Now, you don't want to be in a position where you are the king. You are the king. You are with your men. And someone funny stranger is abusing your character or abusing you. Saying things you never did that are not consistent with your character. If you are alone, you can look at the guy and just smile. But not when we are with your strong men. I get what I'm saying. But David said, shh, leave him. And look at how he connected God to the matter. He said, it's just possible. See, that guy, he won't have the strength to cost me. I, he doesn't have the strength to. So it is just possible that it is God that is instigating him. And God is going to watch out for my own action. 
If I take action against him, then God will keep quiet. But if I keep quiet, God's going to say, ah, somebody's abusing my son. Let me show him mercy. What a thought. What a, what a way of reason. Look at the same David now. Saul was after his life for many years. And he was running. He was living from mountain to mountain, bush to bush. Because of Saul. What did he do? Nothing. He was an innocent man. He just helped his nation. He became a target. All right. One day he was at his cave, his hiding place. Saul walks right into it. Looked around, didn't see anybody. His men looked, his, his SSS or Secret Service men looked everywhere and said, safe. And then the king said, man, I want to sleep. And he laid down to sleep. And all the secret service men or whatever you call them looked around the whole place. It was too safe for them to sleep. And they all started sleeping. And here was David. And someone mentioned to him, said, David, behold the day that the Lord spoke about has come. When he would deliver your enemies into, his, into your hands. Carry spare. You know, like they say in the north, Gavidi Gadoki. See spare. Just pierce this man. You just pierce this man and your problems are over. The thing God said to you that you'll be king will just happen. Everything was looking good for him. Just take this spell now. You know as you're contemplating right now, if this man wakes up, you will be a dead man. So take your action first and kill him. David said, no. I cannot use my hand to touch God's anointing. Now, you know, when he, you see that thing, that, 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 that thing actually happened twice. In, in my mind, I, I, thought, I thought about it. I said, maybe after the first one, God said, no. Like, nah, 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 nah. Huh? A man can reason like this? No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe he was just in a good mood that day. Let's try this again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, let's try this again. And God tried David again. Same thing. Not me. In fact, this time around, he cuts, just for proof, he cuts his skirt. Just a little piece. Even with that, he, he repented. He, he like, Kai God, please forgive me. I just want to show this man that I'm not wicked towards him. Let me just show him evidence that I came this close to killing him. He had to ask God for forgiveness. What a man. That was not scared for his life. Somebody is after your life, yet you're still seeing the person hungry. And you know that if this person has strength, he will kill you. Yet you see the person hungry and say, no, you shouldn't be hungry. Take food and eat. Why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah, because I, I don't think I should see a hungry man and walk away. But that's your enemy. Yeah, I know, but well, he shouldn't be hungry. <laughs> God, your heart now now do you know the essence of this so that when the word of god comes to you it will produce righteousness can you get it now when the word of god comes to you it will produce righteousness for with the heart man believes unto righteousness let me tell you this if your heart is wrong, you will interpret your facts wrong. And if you interpret your facts wrong, even if by the mercies of God, the word of God comes to you, your interpretation of that word will be wrong. And that is how lots of people have gotten testimonies, but they cannot keep it. Why? The testimonies were not executed in righteousness. Look, there are lots of things I have in my heart to share with you. It's not enough to get results. That result must be sustained. That result must become eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? It, it has to become eternal. So it's not just a one-time thing. 
if it is done in righteousness. Now, the only way to be done in righteousness is when your heart is cleansed, when your heart is free, free from hate, hatred, free from envy, free from um, um, whatever, bitterness. You, you, you have, you have, ah, it is your role to make sure your heart is always clean. That's why it says, guard it with all diligence. Don't go before God and say, Lord, this guy, this guy is trying me. I want to get your mind. I want to deal with him. Oh, oh Lord, I, I must deal with this man. Ah, give me wisdom on how to deal with this man. If your heart is evil, see, let me tell you this. God will not speak to you, but you may hear a voice. I'm telling you the truth. Satan uses such opportunities to penetrate God's children and deal with them. He will torment you. I've got to stop here because my time is up. Today, watch your heart. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.